のジョルノ・ジョバーナには夢があるおお金では払えねえぜはい。I'd say probably the only other update that comes close to the sheer amount of impact on the game as a whole was probably the combat update that came with six pistols a while back, where they basically overhauled the entire combat system, M1's health, damage, etc. And I mean, for God's sakes, just look at this. Look at it. It is goddamn beautiful. All that, and it didn't even take six months. Who would have guessed? Now, before we talk about the update proper, one more thing before we start. I'm going to be giving away a Santa GER skin to a random person in the comments section. So, if you want a free of charge Santa GER skin with my name attached to it, then go ahead and leave a comment in the comments below, and I'm going to be randomly picking someone about a day or two after this video goes live. Now, with all that out of the way, let's get to it. The first thing I want to talk about is, of course, Gold Experience Requiem. It's the thing that I was personally most excited about for this update when I first heard about it. It would later turn into accessories, but initially, GER was the thing I was most excited about. For those of you who have been around on the channel for a long time, you'll know that Gold Experience Requiem is my second favorite stand in all of JoJo, so I was really, really excited to see it finally coming to my favorite Roblox JoJo game. And, well, did they deliver? Hell fucking yeah, they did. GER in this game is awesome. I think it perfectly encapsulates the idea and ability of GER in the best way that they could have executed it. But don't just take my word for it, I'll show you. In terms of damaging moves, GER only has two of them, which means that when it comes to damage, you're going to be relying on these two moves as well as your M1s and the other utility moves that GER has access to. As for the damaging moves themselves, The first one is Vigor Punch. Vigor Punch is an uncancelable, blockable, stunning move. When you hit someone with it, it'll do initial damage and stun them, as well as growing ants on their body, which will bite them, dealing damage over time. This is a great, pretty much all purpose move that GER heavily relies upon, again, since it only has two real damaging moves. The other move in terms of damage is Life Beam of Creation. With this move, you press the key and it fires a hit scan beam at your crosshair. If it hits the person, it'll deal damage. You can upgrade it to summon scorpions when you hit them, which will deal extra damage that's guaranteed. As well as if you hit someone who's blocking with this move, it will block break them. In general, the pairing of Vigor Punch and Life Beam is really, really strong, especially since you can hit someone with Vigor Punch and then immediately follow it up with a Life Beam. If you want to get really tricky, you can wait a little bit to see if they'll block, then try to shoot them with the life beam, which will break their block and then give you even more damage than you otherwise might have gotten. Now, GER's offense is relatively solid, but where the stand really shines is in its utility. It has a damage over time healing move that you can use on your teammates. This move is free to unlock as well, however, it does cost some points to upgrade it. But regardless, it means that if you're playing in teams with GER, they're always going to have a healing move for you, which is really cool. It's got a counter, which does basically what you would expect a counter to do. If you hit them while they're using it, it stuns you and opens you up to holy lots of damage. It has an awakening, which I almost hesitate to even call it that because it's more of a short buff than a longer form awakening type move. The buff makes you deal more damage and go faster, but it should be noted that it doesn't make you take any less damage, so you're just as susceptible to getting hit as you would be otherwise. The damage buff is kind of nice, but the real kicker here is the speed. Having a speed advantage in this game is huge, and so having an ability where you can just press the button and you're faster than your opponent is so good, especially on GER, a stand that doesn't have any mobility. And finally, the big bad No You move. 
return to zero. This is definitely the coolest thing that GER has, and I'm kind of surprised that I haven't seen Return to Zero implemented in this way anywhere else so far. Maybe it has and I've just been selectively blind to it, but in TCA it's really cool. Return to Zero's main use is to revert damage because, well, that's what the ability does. So depending on your upgrades, if you have it maxed out, it'll be five seconds, you'll be able to see how much damage you've taken via your health bar at the top of your screen. It'll show you the damage you took in the last five seconds and how much Return to Zero will heal you back to when you use it. This means that Return to Zero is incredibly good against really high damaging combos as well as ultimate moves like Time Stop. It effectively completely denies the use of Time Stop because if you use Time Stop and then attack a GER right after the Time Stop ends, they can press one key on their keyboard and your Time Stop is no more. This way of implementing Return to Zero also let us avoid the sort of YBA nonsense where you use Return to Zero during a Time Stop and it cancels it for everyone involved. Because now you can choose whether you want to use it or not and it will only affect you rather than affecting everyone around you. Now aside from just healing you, Return to Zero has two other uses. The first is that when you use it when you're not stunned, it stuns anyone around you. It's not a long stun and it doesn't really confirm any of your moves, but it does end you slightly positive, which means that you can throw out moves and a lot of the time if the enemy doesn't block, they're gonna get hit by them. And then the other use for Return to Zero is that you're able to use it at any time while you're stunned. This includes getting block broken or parried. If you use it while stunned, it'll play a quick cutscene and then it'll ragdoll the attacker and desummon their stand. Now the great thing about RTZ is because it has so many different applications, you can combine some of these applications together and effectively raise the skill floor of this stand and level your risk versus reward. If you just got hit by a big combo, it might be better to just use RTZ immediately to get all of your health back. But if you think that you can catch up to your enemy right after the combo's been finished and then RTZ them, you could potentially heal yourself on top of putting yourself in a more beneficial position against your enemy. Same thing goes if you get block broken or get stuck in a combo. Sure, you could use RTZ immediately and break yourself out of the combo, but what if you waited a little bit until the enemy used one of their moves and then use RTZ either after or right before it hits you? Lots of people like to use beatdowns after a few M1s when they block break you. So if you time it correctly, wait for them to use the beatdown and then cancel it, they've now wasted their beatdown, you've healed, and now they're on the ground without a stand. All of these small nuances happen in like a matter of seconds and it makes the move really, really cool and fun to play around with. And that being said, GER might be a little bit overpowered right now. I can't say 100% certain because I've only used it for one day, but I have never crushed people as hard as I did today while I was playing. It was like 1v1's speedrun edition. I would just go in and obliterate people, cleaning house over and over again. There was only like two people that had games that actually went on for a decent amount of time or gave me a real fight. Some of that might be tied to accessories, which we'll be talking about in a second, but generally speaking, I was demolishing people with GER, so we'll see if this needs a nerf in the coming days, but for right now, use it while it's fun as shit in case we do nerf it, because damn, this is truly something. Now I talked about GER for a long ass time, sorry about that, I'm just, I just think it's so great, I'm super passionate about it. But uh, the other big thing in this update was accessories. And who boy, people are upset about this one. And you know what? I was there with you about, I don't know, a month and a half ago. When I first heard about accessories, oh man, I was not happy. I thought it was gonna be the death of this game. I thought that I would never wanna play it again. I thought it was going to completely break the game. And I have to tell you that I was completely dead fucking wrong. Accessories are awesome. And they add the fourth pillar to TCA's combat. And that fourth pillar is something that I think a lot of people are missing right now because they're just so used to how things have been before that when a fourth pillar of combat has come in and shaken everything up, they don't know how to deal with all of these new things. I get to cheat because I've known about this stuff for months, so I already know how all of this stuff works, how to counter it, that kind of stuff. But a lot of people, well, they don't know that, and so they're struggling hard. 
Based on my matches with GER, if I had to guess, a lot of the people I was fighting either didn't have accessories at all, or were just slapping some on without any thought. But the point is, accessories are supposed to be just as important as your stand, spec, and character. And I think that's what a lot of people are missing here. I've seen lots of people crying about how certain accessories are overpowered or they're too impactful on gameplay. Um, and to those people, I'd say, well, that's kind of the point. In terms of overpowered accessories, there are some that excel more than others. That much is definitely true. And while we tried our best to test all of the accessories, there's definitely going to be some of the stuff that slipped through the cracks that maybe is a bit stronger than we initially intended it to be. That being said, a lot of the complaints that I've seen that have been levied towards the accessories have been just nothing short of utter nonsense. I've seen a lot of people saying that things like Diavolo's outfit are absolutely broken because you can delete half someone's health bar on a parry or a block break. And yes, that's true. But on the other hand, skill issue. And I don't like saying that, but the reality of the day is a lot of really good players at this game are never going to get block broken or parried. I'm guilty of getting block broken a lot because I just play stupid. But at the end of the day, if you're playing this game at a higher level, you're not gonna get block broken or parried. That makes this accessory effectively a noob killer. And this update introduced a lot of noob killers. And these noob killers have given well, noobs, the impression that there's a lot of broken, overpowered accessories because they directly exploit the flaws of bad players. I don't know how else to sum it up other than that. If you're getting block broken over and over again against a player or getting parried over and over again against a player, you were probably screwed anyway. Now you're just double screwed. And the other thing that you have to consider is if you're running something like Diavolo's outfit, you're now not running something else that could be helping you. So if you take a situation where someone's running Diavolo's outfit and the Joestar mark to make them do 10% more damage, and they're going up against somebody who's using the Accelerated Bible, which decreases your cooldowns if you land your moves, as well as, I don't know, Gentleman's Wrath, this person with Gentleman's Wrath, if they don't get block broke or parried, well, Diavolo's outfit is completely useless to them now. It does nothing, and they're at an objective disadvantage for putting on that accessory. There are a lot of examples like this. I saw some complaints about Joestar Punch, and I just, like, I, I don't know how. Like, do you guys, <laughs> people are just, I don't know, they see Big Punch Haymaker move that does 30 damage, and they're like, oh my god, broken! Guys, it does 30 damage. That's not that much. That's like three M1s for most stands in the game and it has a 30 second cooldown. And they can't run anything else. <laughs> like they have to run that. It uses up any sort of stat bonuses they could use. I don't know. I think that as the accessories go on, people will come to terms with it and see eye to eye with the vision of myself as well as the other people on the design team and the developers. But for right now, I think the outrage is gonna go on for a little bit longer. I will let you in on one little secret from yours truly, but uh, most of the people that play these games are not very good, and so at lower levels, you have a lot of block breaks, parries, and noob killer things are really good at those lower levels. And um, I don't know if you've seen this interesting game called Blocks Fruit, where you kill people in one hit, but children like killing people in one hit. So all I'm saying is if we can have a system that allows bad players to kill each other in one hit, but good players have a new interesting system, well, I think you see what I'm getting at. If you want some of my favorite combinations for accessories to try out for yourself, my personal favorite is Jonathan's chest plate along with Jonathan's shirt. Jonathan's chest plate increases your damage by 20% and takes away 60 of your health, and Jonathan's shirt increases your health by 60. So in other words, I'm just doing 20% more damage. I'm a fundamentals kind of guy. I like to just play the game as normal without too many gimmicks. And so just getting 20% damage? How can I say no to that? Of course, lots of people have already seen the oh my god, holy shit that is Diavolo's outfit and Jonathan's chest plate, which makes people's health bars vanish if they get block broken or parried. So you gotta be really careful against that kind of stuff. And the other two fun ones that I've messed around the most with in the test server are Gentleman's Wrath along with Joestar Punch, which makes it so when you hit zero HP, you go into a sort of 
last ditch rage mode where you get 100 HP that drains, your M1s do more damage, you can't use your stand, your heavy punch or double right click is able to be used in stun, and your M1s go through block, which just in general is bonkers and super fun to mess with. And when you pair that with Joestar Punch, you can use it while you're in Gentleman's Wrath, and it does like 60 damage. So you lose, you get killed, and then the enemy takes 60 damage plus more. <laughs> it's hilarious. It's so much fun. And the last fun combination for you is Joestar Punch along with the Accelerated Bible. Because it's so difficult to miss Joestar Punch, you basically just have a lower cooldown while using it, which is really handy for a move that has a 30 second cooldown. But overall, accessories are going to open up the game to so many possibilities. And I think that a lot of people are not understanding just how high of a height that we can get to with this. Just how many different ways to play we can add especially with the prospect of being able to completely replace or add moves. Like, there is so much room for potential there, and we're gonna make sure that we capitalize on it. Regardless of how many accusations that fly around about how Roblox is Unbreakable did this first, and how we're a shameless ripoff, or yada yada yada, I think it's pretty clear to me that it's done way better here. It's less of an addition, and more of a pillar of gameplay, as I said earlier. And as for the rest of the update, there's a lot of stuff here, and I don't want to go on forever and ever and ever because we've already gone on for probably too long just talking about the two main aspects of the update. Overall, I think that this update's going to be really important for TCA as a whole. It's added arguably the most interesting stand we've gotten so far, as well as an entirely new pillar to gameplay that's going to add a whole lot of wacky new ways to play the game. Now, will it work in terms of getting people to play? Yeah, I doubt it, because I'm Resident Doomer. People aren't going to give a shit. We could make God's gift to Roblox JoJo and people aren't going to play it. But goddammit, I'm having fun with this shit. And if you want to have fun with it too, then jump in. I'll link the game in the description as well as the pinned comment. So if you haven't played it, jump in here and have some fun with us. Anyways, with that being said, I'm done here. If you enjoyed the video, you can leave a like and subscribe. If you didn't, don't. And with all that being said, have a wonderful day or night wherever you are, and I'll see you guys next time.